Hello, my name is Barry. Welcome to Christianity Explained, where my goal is to provide biblical teaching, search culture, and occasional book review. And today, we are doing a review of a book written by Alexander Pajani. You might know him as one of the so-called demon slayers. Like <laughs> he wrote he recently wrote a third book called The Secret to Maintaining Your Deliverance. Now, I'm gonna give a couple of disclosures at the start, which is important. One, I really had no interest in doing a review of this book at all. I'm not it's not a something I'm actually interested in, but I felt like the Lord was prompting me to go forward and do, and to provide a perspective that others might not do. I don't know. I'm just sharing what happened, okay? Downloaded the book, found it, some uh, things that I like, which I'll mention, and things that brought up some areas of concern. Now, do I have experience in deliverance? Uh, if you mean inner healing, dealing with stuff like that, yes, I've done a lot of book reading and, and knowledge of that. Do know that the demons are real, all that fun stuff. I'm a charismatic Pentecostal, so yes. Now, let's move on to the book itself. Hmm. Alex does mention in, in the book, right in the introduction, he wants to turn on the light because the first two books were rather demon focused. Okay, that's nice. <laughs> now, I had to chuckle a little bit when Alexander Fajani mentioned that. Uh, until he got involved in this, he didn't know about this demon under every rock stuff. Hmm. Uh, Alex, where have you been, bro? I got exposed to that back in the 90s. <laughs> it was a, either a demon under this rock, a demon of this. Oh, yay, yay. So, yeah. <laughs> there is a tendency to be a little to demon conscious. And I'm glad Alexander is trying to address the problem. Okay. Good. How did he go about doing this? Well, stick with it, folks. Uh, I'm not going to go chapter by chapter, but I am going to highlight some things. First chapter. Uh, he starts off by mentioning a user's manual. Um, now, here's the fact, and I did a little research over time about who Alexander's audience is, and I think this really shaped what's going on. He's not talking to uh, people who have a sense of knowledge of the Word of God. No, he's not talking to the reform, not talking to uh, guys like me who do have an understanding of scripture and all that. He's talking to young Christians who are immature in their belief. They don't know everything and they're hungry for anything that will help them with their struggle. I get it. So it's written in, in that, with that view in mind. Now, what about this user manual thing? Well, the real user manual, if you want to call it that, should be the Word of God, not his book, okay? And he does try very hard to make that clear. Unfortunately, I think a lot of young Christians are going to be more inclined to read a book because out of fear of what, out of some fear, of some sort, and I'm going to give some suggestions to help you you guys out with that. 
The problem I have, the more real problem I have with it is this. When, when I think of a user's manual, I think of a book that's designed to help me uh, troubleshoot a problem, how a product works, and that's the analogy he uses. Great. The Word of God, the Bible, is, yes, there are some rules and regulations in, in Leviticus and, and to extent in Exodus and, and Deuteronomy. True. And there are a lot of instructions uh, about what to do and what not to do. Yes. But that, uh, that's not the whole thing. And I, my concern is that young Christians might make the mistake. So I want to encourage something that Corey Miner did, did a while ago. And that was to emphasize the idea of read the Bible like the story. Like you open up the story of Genesis. What was going on? The discovering. Like you would a book. And discover along the way the faithfulness of God Almighty and discover the hidden treasure. And there are a lot of hidden treasures. In that respect, I could play along with Alex on that one. And that's good. And there are. So I would encourage maybe doing that. I realize for a lot of Christians, because we do, and especially in this country, have a like 11 or 10 percent Bible literacy rate, and that's scary. So there's a tendency to want to latch on to some book to for things. <laughs> Keep in mind, if your ability is audio, you can listen to an audio version of the Word of God. You're not stuck to print, all right? And I try to use the New Living Translation, and I noticed uh, Alexander does make references with that. Could he understand that? Okay, not every they want an easy to understand. Good. And by the way, I don't know if anyone uh, took notice of the footnotes that Alex was using. I found them in my uh, Kindle version. That's why I'm able to review the book like that. A lot of what he was using in the footnote come from the Blue Letter Bible site. That's where he may have done his word studies, gotten the scriptures from there, and the different translations. Hmm. And I and I used the Blue Letter, and it is easy to use. It's not that hard. And I would encourage you to do something like that, especially those of you who admire. And they do have an audio version of the various translations you can listen to. All right. <laughs> if you haven't figured out, uh, my mode of operandi is exhortation, encourage, empower, and not just give a, a critique and take long or, or try to get into the, into the weed of teaching. Now, let's move on to the next thing. And I commend how for trying to put people but I think, uh, I wish I could give you a, a better analogy. I wish I could offer, hopefully uh, somebody can kind of help along and say, well, wait a minute, this is what <laughs> might be better. Because we're, let's remember who we're actually talking about, okay? We're not talking about the Corey Miner type, okay? Or me or others, no. <laughs> Second, I'm glad he mentioned the other part, and that was the importance of the fact that we have Christ in us. He does definitely mention the reality of the Holy Spirit living inside us, and you need not be afraid, because a big part of the problem is fear. And I know that he was trying to address a lot of this. He also was trying to address the issue of of deliverance idolatry, he calls it. Hmm. Yes. Uh, he does mention that. Good. Now, uh, okay, I'm going to 
I call up my Kindle uh, app on my computer, and you'll find out why in just a few seconds. Okay, folk, you are looking at my Kindle app. And just so you know, I did a search on on this on on his statement. As you can see right here, I have it highlighted. He's saying, I'm being completely honest when I say that a vast majority of people he recognizes that okay. A lot of the people who come into these things don't actually have, but unfortunately, they're so convinced in their head that they have, oh, must be. So it's like, okay. So that kind of probably what told them. And he also was alerted to courtesy of, of some of his critics. Say, hey, uh, are you aware that? Hmm. And I'm looking. Hmm. Ah, uh, yes. Here's what I was looking for right here. He had to repeat this, not exactly this phrase, but he keeps finding. Him. And because of all the problem, he's seeing with the demon consciousness. He said, it's all through chapter four of his book. He makes it abundantly clear. Everything is not a demon. And you can go, and that's true. He's talking to that audience. Not his critics. <laughs> oh, but she, and that's good. I'm glad he, uh, to see you mentioned that, Alex, because there is a problem. And I think what it is is we have glorified uh, this whole thing. But in reality, it's a distraction. We're supposed to be glorifying Jesus. We're supposed to be glorifying God and who he is, not uh, putting focus on ourselves. And if, by the way, there's about 20 references to a demon. That's the search I did. And a, and a good bunch of it is in chapter 4 where he goes after this. And one of the things he tells us to avoid is this excessive uh, looking for everything. That's not the only thing he did in the book. <laughs> he also uh, addresses the need for personal responsibility. Yes, he did say we need to take responsibility for our action and, and dealing with it. And he, provide in his, uh, according to his understanding what to do. A need for holiness, personal holiness, which is a good thing. But I would encourage, uh, I believe he meant made it clear, but just in case uh, it didn't come out that well, yeah, let the Holy Spirit guide you in that walk, in doing that. Because if we try doing it in our flesh, we'll uh, make a wreck out of it. We'll be uh, operating out of our flesh and entering into legalism. He has to be warned against that. And I want to encourage you. No. Yes, do it. He also addressed another issue, which is actually very important. And it's actually kind of scary and sad. And that is the need for fellowship. Guys, we all need fellowship with brothers and sisters in Christ. Perhaps you saw an earlier video that where I get into conversation with people uh, who don't exactly agree with everything I do. Who am I to think I know more? I don't. <laughs> there are people who know way more than I, and I enjoy the challenge. Don't be afraid of that. I think the report he's getting is that so many people are afraid um, because they're so focused on deliverance that they're like afraid to go to any church that doesn't. Guys, we need to put 
and emphasis on honoring God. And there are plenty of good choices that will help you with that, even if they're not seeing eye to eye on everything, okay? <laughs> oh, yeah. But I wanted to encourage that. And where a lot of people are going online, where they feel safe. Oh, oh, good. That's not good. It is not a good trend. And uh, we need local brothers and sisters who can minister uh, to us, as opposed to people who, I'm thankful for the friends I have, one who live in Indiana, other who live in Florida and other places. But guess what? If I'm sick in the hospital, it's going to be kind of difficult for them to come and see from people, my family and local church family can. They can do more for me than they have, than the ones who fall away. <laughs> so I want to encourage that. It's right. <laughs> and like I said, there are some positive things and some things that this way is concerned. Did I look to verify? No. I just wanted to give an overall view and understanding what I saw. Uh, me, I'm probably not going to pick up this book again. It's not a real value to me. But I felt it was important because of who he is and the fact that so many people are concerned. I felt like I needed to uh, speak up on it and try to offer some words of encouragement. Don't be afraid to read the scripture. Spend time in prayer and worship. Yes. Trust the spirit to guide you and telling you what to give up. All right? And maybe that's the Lord will tell you, hey, you need to stop spending time on these prison movies or whatever it is. Because he wants you to stay focused on him, not everything else. <laughs> then do that. All right? I want to I hope this video is of value and encouragement because, and there's something else he mentioned in his book, which can be forgotten. <laughs> and I know some um, that, but biblical continuationists who will love it if they catch it. The more you grow in, in your maturity with the Lord, the more you grow to understand who He is and how what he's able to do, all that, guess what? You're going to end up not even bothering with deliverance. Hmm. Yeah, because, oh, well, yeah, that was nice. I went, that was helpful over here, but I don't need, right? Oh. <laughs> and yes, uh, I will also address another uh area of concern that is an area for me. With all the uh, focus on delivering from demons, uh, I'm glad Alex did mention that a lot of people probably may have a mental problem or emotional. Yeah, there are other kinds of strongholds. That's why it's important to do counseling. When I did do a deliverance session, with some personal friends, it was with people I, I can trust, who I know them, I have had a hit, personal history with them, and they did everything. I mean, they did better than what uh, than what uh, Alexander did, <laughs> because they already know the stuff. It's like, <laughs> okay, dude. So I had something, and yes, Church community is key to a lot of this. And, get, and getting rid of Yes. Uh, all right. Enough. I probably spend about, oh, yeah. Approaching <laughs> 20 minutes. And hope you enjoy. And I trust you will have a blessed day. See ya. When I see ya. <laughs>